Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Gundam News. And we're starting off with some really amazing news. I'm sure many of you are aware that the moving Gundam statue alongside the whole Gundam Factory Oklahoma complex where it was housed was going to be closing down at the end of next month. But fortunately for anyone who hasn't been able to visit yet, that is now was going to be closing because they've decided to extend it by a whole year. Meaning that right now, the RX-78F00 Gundam will be closing down on March 31st, 2024. And remember, this is already the second time that they've extended it, so I think it's definitely within the realm of possibility that they're going to keep on extending it, or like at least extend it one more time. At the end of the day, the moving Gundam is there to make money. And I'm fairly certain that there's a lot of people outside of Japan who simply haven't had the opportunity yet to go to Japan, because of reasons, you know what, and haven't, and therefore haven't been able to visit the Gundam statue yet. And Japan has only recently opened up, so you've got people who are still saving up, they had other vacations planned because, well, there simply wasn't a prospect of Japan opening up yet, um, or they just weren't able to make time on such short notice because of work and stuff. So, I think that in this extra year, the Gundam Factory Yokohama and the Moving Gundam are still going to be seeing a lot of new foreign tourists, which might then push them to extend the closing date again. And for the figure fans, we also had some really good news. Like the metal built Gundam Astray Gold Frame Alternative Strike version. Uh, for maximum articulation, it uses the same joints as the Retrogonics, and its main accessory is the newly molded Gay Bulk Bazooka. But of course, that is not all. Being an Astray, it comes with two beam sabers with effect parts, the standard beam rifle, and the standard shield. And then, because it's the gold frame, it also comes with parts to replicate the chopped off right arm and even parts to have the shield hooked up to the right shoulder. And because it's the alternative strike version, it is also compatible with all previously released striker packs. All of that for just 26,400 yen, 195 US. Pre-orders over at P Bandai started on the 20th and this beauty is currently slated for an August release. And then the second big announcement was the Robot Spirits Gelguk Marine Shimagarahau Custom Lily Marlene Launch Version Version Anime. And if you're having a case of deja vu, this is indeed based on the older Robot Spirits figure. But it does have some differences. Uh, the most obvious one is that it now comes with the launch pad of the Lily Marlene, allowing you to make a really nice diorama with this set. But the Gelguk itself is also slightly different. It now has markings applied to it, and I don't know if it's because of the pictures, but it also looks like the color scheme is ever so slightly more vibrant. Um, Pre-orders on P Bandai will be opening on the 24th, and for 10,450 N, 77 US, this thing can be yours in August. And of course, it also comes with a bunch of other accessories too. Like the giant shield, giant beam machine gun, beam sabers, beam effect parts, thruster effect parts, and hands. And continuing with the P Bandai limited items, we have the FW Gundam Converge Full Armor Double Zeta Gundam and Quinn Mantha that went up for pre-order on Friday. And if you're having another case of deja vu, then yes, these are also, again, based on older versions, with just a few minor differences. Both figures have new paint jobs and markings, and the Double Zeta comes with new Hyper Beam Sabers. 
The Double Zeta Gundam goes for 3,960 yen, 30 US. The Quinn Mantha goes for 4,950 yen, uh, 37 US, and both are slated for a June release. The next set then isn't P Bandai, and is linked down below, but it is yet another recolor. The FW Gundam Hashtag Operation Jobro set. A 10 pack of these will set you back 6,930 yen, around uh, 55 US, and the six possibilities are the real type Gundam, Gun Cannon, Gun Tank, Jim, Short Zagok, and Regular Zagok, and the base that they're on also has a really cool camo pattern. And then finally for the figures, in celebration of its 15th anniversary, Tamashi Nations will be holding the Tamashi Nations World Tour. And the World Tour is pretty well rounded. New York from April 28th until the 30th, Tokyo from May 26th until July the 18th, and then Mexico City, Shanghai, and Paris at a date that is yet to be announced. And one of the limited items that they've already unveiled is a face shift down Robot Spirit Strike Gundam for 5,500 yen for the US, so yes, another recolor, <laughs> and a special stand that will be handed out to visitors. Uh, for Gumpla then, um, we also got some news, but nothing too big. Especially not compared to the figure news and their massive amount of recolors. Uh, Japanese P Bandai got a restock of the High Great Universal Century G Defensor and Flying Armor set, which comes with water slide decals and compatibility with the real grades. Um, the release date of the SDW Heroes Dominant Superior D Dragon has been pegged on March the 18th, and the Hyper Plamo Fest 2023 happened. Some people were apparently expecting new Gumpla to be announced at this event, but that was something that was never promised, and instead, they did do exactly what they said they were going to do. Hand out and sell some limited stuff, have a performance by Lincoln Planet, have the full mechanics aerial unboxed by Kana Ichinose and Yohei Azakami, and break the Guinness World Record for most people building plastic models at once. So I guess the ball is back in America's court to try and reclaim it. Um, also, I'm sure that this won't come as a surprise to anyone, but the anti-scalper methods they employed didn't quite work out as planned. At least not for the Richetta. On Yahoo Auctions, she goes from anywhere from 120 to 200 US with sold listings. These aren't just prices people are throwing out there and see if someone bites. The fish have already bitten, so this is the market price for the limited Richetta. Um, so I'm just going to quote this tweet by Adelina. Hyper Plamo Fest, more like Hyper Scalper Fest. And from Witch from Mercury, we're getting the Witch from Mercury Expo on March the 10th and 11th. People who go to the expo will be getting one of eight stickers based on the model kits or promotional art and will be able to enjoy a variety of things. On the outside, there is going to be a statue of the standard aerial and the aerial rebuild. They've got a special theater set up so that you can fully experience Suleta's first duel. There's going to be various photo spots for taking pictures. And best of all, they're going to be recreating Gules Camp. Best expo ever. On the inside then, they'll have a lot of information on the anime and Gumpla dioramas recreating famous scenes, and they'll also be showing off a lot of upcoming goods. All of the upcoming Gumpla and also new gachapons, cards, apparel, figures, and stationery. And while some of the stuff that they'll be showing off might be already announced things, Based on the brands they have on this picture related to the subject, I definitely think they're also going to be showing off new things, because we don't yet have an announced Gundam Girls Generation figure for Witch from Mercury. So I wonder who the first one is going to be. 
Is it going to be Soleta or is it going to be Miorine? Um, also, what's funny is that P Bandai will be selling a clear file for the expo online, but not at the actual event itself. Like, why not? <laughs> Uh, but anyways, um, I want to end by drawing your attention to the amazing promotional art for this event. You really gotta take your time to take it all in, and especially have a look for all of the choo-choo floof in there. And staying with Witch from Mercury, Japanese P Bandai has begun accepting pre-orders for both the medium and large sized Fuwa Kororin plushies. The medium ones go for 1,650 yen a piece, 12 US, and the big ones go for 4,180 yen a piece, 31 US. Um, they're slated for a May release, and while you can find them in regular stores, the fancy Shadik one is only available through P Bandai. And in other news, the box art for Rikin Gista in G's fifth movie's Blu-ray and DVD box has been released, alongside with some of the bonuses that it comes with, like storyboards and these two really nicely illustrated cards, and the box art for the Rikin Gista in G TV series, compact Blu-ray and DVD box have also been unveiled. On the gaming front then, the big news was a collaboration with the Puzzle and Dragons mobile game. And while I don't play the game myself, I can definitely enjoy the art assets for the collaboration. We've got Amro and his Gundam, Shar and his Zaku, Kira and the Strike, Camille and the Zeta, the Exia and his Gundam, and of course, Suleta and the Ariel. But I feel like there's just something wrong with Suleta's art. There we go, that's much better. The collaboration went live on the 21st and will last until March 11th. In Gundam Battle Operation 2 then, the S Gundam joined the fun, meaning that you can now claim that you're using an aimbot for the cannon experience rather than cheating. Uh, Gundam Breaker Mobile got the Alice Earth 3 Gundam as part of the Sokai Festival, the Azure Avalanche event, and a pickup capsule for the Sting Oakley AI pilot. In UCN Gage there was a pickup gacha for the Psycho Zaku and Daryl and a limited time clan battle event. And for the arcade fans, a few years ago many of Sega's arcades closed down across Japan but now one of the big ones in Akihabara will be reopening as a Bandai Namco arcade and store. Uh, the place will open up on March the 1st, and as part of the opening, they'll be holding a hands-on event for the upcoming Gundam Extreme vs 2 Overboost. The event will last until the 5th, but you do have to apply beforehand through a lottery system. Winners will receive a free clear file and will be able to play 6 games for 300 yen. During this event, only solo play will be available and players also cannot use the Earth 3 Gundam. As for the things you could get this week then. On Saturday, the Shars Counterattack original soundtrack was re-released on vinyl for the first time in 35 years and consists of bangers like the main theme, Sally, Mission, and of course, Beyond the Time. This limited edition goes for 4,840 yen, 36 US, and in addition to the beautiful artwork, the disc itself is printed in red with Shars logo on it which automatically makes it three times more awesome than a regular vinyl. And today then, you could get the SDW Heroes Alternative Justice Infinite Dragon for 1320 yen 10 US. A version of the Infinite Justice that not just has its colors inverted, but even its name. For this week's reading material then, there was the spring edition of Auto Media with Gyul and Lauda on the cover, the March issue of Grand Jump Mucha in which Gundam Rust Horizon is being serialized, the anime and game logo design book in which a lot of Gundam logos are included, and the sixth chapter of The Legend of Dragon Knight appeared online, linked down below. On to this week's Gundam Apparel then, where Bun Kure kicked things off with some nice Witch from Mercury inspired designs. 
First up, if you want to represent the Earth House, we've got a sweatshirt for 7,150 yen, around 55 US, and a hoodie for 7,700 yen, around 60 US. And then we've got an Astacastia sports uniform inspired t-shirt uh, for 3,520 yen, around 25 US. But it is important to say inspired here uh, because there are a few very minute differences. On the actual uniform, the chest design goes all the way up to the collar, which is not the case with the real life one. And the same goes for the design on the arm. It doesn't quite continue all the way to the bottom on the real life one. A bit unfortunate for those who wanted to rock a 100% accurate Astacasia cosplay to the gym. But whatever the case might be, all of these Bancode items are currently slated for an April release. From Strict G then, we got a collaboration with Edwin to create six Gundam inspired pairs of jeans. They go for 14,850 yen each, around 110 US, and the available designs are Red Comet Black, Red Comet Dark Blue, Quattro Bagina Black, Quattro Bagina Dark Blue, a Full Frontal Black or Full Frontal One Wash. And these pants, inspired by completely different people, went up for sale last week, Friday. Then over at utsco.com, you can grab two Gundam Wing inspired bomber jackets for 125 US a pop. Um, there's a Hiro Yui and Wing Zero version and a Zex and Epion version. And despite the very Japanese name of the website, um, it is based in the United States, making these two bomber jackets very easy to get for Americans. And last but not least, we got some really cool Cospa stuff, with the flagship being the Zeta Gundam Wave Rider collection. You can get it on a 100cm wall scroll for 6050 yen, around uh, 50 US, a B2 wall scroll for 3190 yen, around 20 US, a white or dark blue t shirt for 3300 yen, around 25 US, a cleaning cloth for 660 yen, around 5 US, a regular sticker for 550 yen, 4 US, and a more heavy duty outdoor sticker for 770 yen, 6 US. And then we've also got some more standard Gundam Apparel items. A Principality of Zeon or Neo Zeon hoodie for 6,380 yen, around 50 US. A Black Zeon, Moss Zeon, Navy Federation or Brown Federation t-shirt for 3,520 yen, 25 US. Zeon Earth Attack Forces or Earth Federation Space Forces jeans for 8,580 yen, around 65 US, and a Black Zeon or Grey Federation wallet for 2,970 yen, around 20 US. All of these items will also be available in regular hobby stores, so I'll have them linked down below, and they'll all be flying your way in mid-May, with the only exceptions being the card cases, which are slated for an early June release. And then we're wrapping up with the currently ongoing Gundam.info poll. With the upcoming release of the Tomika X Gundam collaboration, they want to know what other Gundam vehicles we would love to see as the next thing of the collaboration. And we've got some interesting disagreements between the Twitter poll and the website poll. They agree that the DOP and the Space Launch should be in last place with the DOP dead last and the Space Launch in third place, but on the website things are still pretty close, whereas on Twitter there's a much bigger gap between them and the two leaders, the Musai and the Gallop. And this is where the real difference lies. Um, on the website, the Gallop is ahead, but on Twitter, the Musai is ahead. And I gotta say, I'm definitely in agreement with Twitter here. Not something I was expecting to say today, but whatever. Um, even though the Gallop does have the advantage of being an actual vehicle, I think getting the Musai would be the overall better deal, because even though these things will be made with wheels beneath them, 
remember that on the wide base, you could actually remove those wheels and you would just end up with a standard wide base figure. And I think that the option to buy one or more cheap Musai figures is definitely something that will appeal to a lot of people. But let me know what you think in the comments down below or by voting in the polls, which are also linked down below. And that has been all for this week's Gundam News. As always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters. I hope everyone watching has a great evening, and I'll see you all next week with more Gundam News.